Um, Happy New Year, as we said before, and praise the Lord that right now we're at the place of the first day of the fast. I, I hope your hearts and minds are as ready as they could be for this 11th year. I believe it is for us, um, the 12th year for Deron. Uh, if anyone does or does not, um, who wants to know more about the fast and how to do this uh, responsibly, go to the soulfactory.com. There's a video on the, soul, on, on the website that will help you to, that will just give you some information to see what fasting is, what it isn't. And, um, to help you move forward in this. Um, it has been a blessing for us. This is this is where we, well, the, where, 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 where we position ourselves a certain way for the rest of our year. We do this because how you start, how we start a year is gonna make a difference on how, you know, uh, uh, how it looks for us and how it goes for us and some of the other things that we might do. So um, I'm very thankful for this, this time. Um, and just all that, that God has, has been doing in our lives. As I said earlier, and I mean, the, yesterday and maybe the day before, you know, right now, these times of uncertainty, these times of um, shiftings in the world, these times that challenge our flesh gives us an opportunity to lean more towards our spirit. I know someone, you know, we, we think that that should happen every day, but the truth is it doesn't. You know, this is why the Bible can say, God said, when I, when I slew them, then they came to me because, you know, sometimes it takes a bit of disturbance to wake us up. And so hopefully you know, for whatever, whatever wakes us up, you know, um, is all intended to bring us towards God and to help us to appreciate and live in, within the love of God, um, as God intended, you know, uh, I, I remember when I, I really realized that when, when all these other things that God tried with human beings, to get human beings to recognize the value of a relationship with him, the value of his creation. Um, he, 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 God decided that the biggest thing that he could do was to win us by showing love. And if he had, and, and, and that's why John um, 3.16 says, and God so loved the world, and, and someone else would hear it this way. That audience would hear it this way. This is how God showed love to the world. And so God so loved the world. This is how he showed it. He, he gave his son. And so, you know, if you are a parent or, or not, if you're just a human being, here's a beautiful thing to know and to remember. That love is 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 uh, uh, the desire to 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 show someone love and then uh, 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 in hopes that that would change that that would change their perspectives in life that would change help them see life in a more hopeful way and this is what God did for us he decided you know what you know and, and I'm, I'm talking to people who can hear like a parent or hear like any kind of leader and that is that all of these things will work, but God would rather, would rather us be drawn by his love. Even any measure that is used to draw us toward, towards God, at the end of the day, it is, it is motivated by love. But we know that even when we show our own children consequences, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we give them consequences. Why? Because we love them. But what, <clears throat> what do we prefer? We prefer that they see our love and that we, they respond to our love in such a way that they would see that their life is valuable, that they would see that they're worth saving, 
um, uh, 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 that, that, that they would see that they matter. So hopefully uh, this is this is the space I'm doing the first day of the fast of the rest of the year that we will see that God's love, God intends us, <coughs> excuse me, intends to lead us by love. I know that can be prayed, but I'm gonna say a little prayer too. So let's take a moment to do that. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Father, I commit myself to you, this voice, <coughs> this instrument. I ask, Father God, that you help all of us get our ears in tune for what you're going to do today, what you're going to say today. But most of all, Father God, what you're going to do with the words that I spoke. I pray for every heart that wants change. I pray for every mind, God, that feels unstable. And is looking for stability in you. I thank you, Father God, that I know, I know that it is your will that none of us should perish. And we're grateful for that. Amen. So here's where I want us to start. <coughs> this is Grounded in Hope, part one. When we are looking to be changed by the power of God in a world where we're dealing with the unseen and the uncertain. <clears throat> it starts with a mindset from us, a disposition. And when we don't start from the, dis the disposition, the mindset of hope, then our walk um, becomes a little more staggered, unstable, not so balanced. So Romans 8, 31-36. It's one of those scriptures that is important to just keep before you every day. I, I say hang it on your wall. <laughs> Excuse me. In times like this, I say hang it on your wall. I say we need an everyday reminder of something because every day we are reminded of what this world has become. I, I told you, Ron, this morning, I said, you know, my nose is running at times, my throat itches, or it ain't even an itch anymore. Um, and it feels like it's random. And I said, you know, earlier today, I, I wasn't feeling so good. Then I drank some tea and I felt better inside. You know, uh, 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 I'm not accustomed to not feeling just under the weather. But just to this, in somebody in somebody's world, they would call it an attack. Because I can tell you, I was talking all day, talking to the Ron, doing this, not one cough. So I'm not accustomed to something. But because God is stable in my life, then I can continue to move forward. Uh, 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 in 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 the in the mindset of becoming and transformation and the reveal and all of those things that happen as you continue to move forward. So Romans eight thirty one to thirty six. This is this is something that I say we should keep close to us, and it says this: What then shall we say to these things? You can go back and read what these things were. If God is for us, who can be against us? See, see, the thing about hope, let me, let me say this. The thing about hope, it is, it is the anticipation. Is, is what you do and, and, and what you allow your, how you shift your energy in times like this. With the, and, and anticipating that God is for us and nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I didn't tell you that we can't get off course. That 
you cannot put yourself in a space where consequences have to teach you because love has not done it for you. The love of God at this point, you know, has, has not gotten into those spaces that could really appreciate this. But during these times of the unseen, in the unseen and the uncertain, there's something that you have to keep real close to you. If God is for you, who can be against you? And then Romans 31 says, verse 32, he who did, here we go. Let me start at 31 again. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son. This is love language. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I could just break down the crown for that. See, you know, Paul is saying, pay attention to this. Why would God give his own son and then hold back deliverance from you? Hold back uh, 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 the things that you need to stabilize you in life on this day. Why would he hold that back? And, and even the, the reason why it's so important to hear it because when we don't see it, when we want to see it, we begin to search for other, other things, other, other escapes. And God said, I, I'll provide the way of escape. So if God, you know, when the Bible said God will provide a way of escape, it definitely says to me, oh yeah, and, and, and what we do is we look for ways of escape. God will provide a way out. He really will. It, it, but but when these things don't happen, when not just when we want it to, but when we feel that we've been pushed to uh, the limits of who we are or what we've known or what we were accustomed to, it can become uh, 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 scary in a, uh, 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 in a way or concerning in a way. And we might even not even notice that our, 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 frequencies are off our our uh uh we, we, we're not aligned or, or not balanced which are two different things at this point and so he says he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how should he not with him also freely give us all things this is paul talking to somebody who obviously had was doubting somebody was doubting and there was that he's talking to someone who at least believed that God gave his son. From this point on, you all, all of us who believe that, why would we think that God would keep from us the lesser things when he gave us the greater thing? Why would he keep from us the lesser things? And this is something I believe that, you know, on a daily basis, we may have to tell ourselves, this makes no sense. Why, why would God leave me out there now? You know, one of our favorite songs was, he did not bring me out this far to take me back again. One of our favorite songs that Ruth, Ruth sang for years uh, 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 during praise and worship, he did not bring me out this far. See, that, that, the, the assumption is that you know that God brought you out. Then you can say to take me back again. So if you believe that God brought you out, when you feel like you're going back again and, 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 and your circumstances are pressing on you to the degree where, where your life looks like an old way again, just know this, just wait on God. Just, just take the time and tell yourself, you didn't bring me out this far to take me back again. So whatever I'm seeing that looks like I'm going back again, 
is my perception. Give me that. Give me, help me see. Help my mindset. So that I can see that some of these, these familiar things, familiar attitudes, familiar expressions, thoughts, that this is not you taking me back. Even, even if these things look like something, like a going back, you're not taking me back with this. Sometimes, listen, that's all you need to know to, to, to get your mind focused back on moving forward uh, in the way that God would have you to move forward. So he said in verse 32, who, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him so freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against? God's elect. It is God who justifies. I don't know where you are today, but it is God who justifies. It is God who determines, determines not, not people's opinions. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? Because they are in God's own hands. You are in God's own, own hand. God knows what he's doing with you. Even, even when people don't, you, you, Jill, and anybody, you stay in a space of integrity. And you do your best not to give the devil a foothold in your life. Because that part God can't stop you from doing. That you and I can do. That's where our choice is. That's where our power is. We won't give the devil a foothold. Oftentimes, when the Bible spoke about the devil being given a foothold, a foothold, it, 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 it was centered around relationship and unforgiveness. Someone, someone not forgiving a brother for whatever he did do. He said, listen, 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 let that go. Let that go. This, this, this person who did this, they need another chance. They have to be given a chance to do, to, to, to walk in, in another way in righteousness. And if we don't let this go, <coughs> some people keep trying to prove to you and I that they have changed. God said, don't do that. It's been long enough. <coughs> excuse me, verse 34 says this. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. Do you believe that? That, 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 that Christ coming in the flesh. Oh, he knows how to talk to the father about our temptations. <clears throat> Excuse me. He knows how to talk to the father about our worries. He knows how to talk to the father about our misgivings. But it's for you to hold on to this because somewhere along the line, some of this is going to find itself in your life and in your space. And you're going to need to believe God over, over your own self-assessment, your own self-judgment. You're going to have to believe what God has to say. And you're going to have to believe, and we're going to have to believe that God is who he said he is. <coughs> Excuse me, even in a world that is at this point dominated by three different kinds of COVID variants, allergies, and flus, and financial struggles, and businesses being affected, and this uh, uh, loss of life in this world, we, right here, right here, we are going to have to believe God. 
He says this, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. This is Paul talking to people because there's two groups of people now having to fellowship because Jesus, uh, 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 because of the work of Christ. And now they're, they're, they're believers that have different kind of backgrounds come together. And there are people who feel like they don't belong because maybe someone else was there longer. And now they feel like they don't belong. These Gentiles feel like these Jews who have had that word and had and, and, and was heard the words and, and walked with the Messiah and, and, and had this rich culture from the beginning. You know, these people were, they were very confused. Somebody said they need to be circumcised in order to belong. And all they wanted to do was to belong so they could become. So that they could become all that God, I'm going to say it this way, so that the son of God may be made manifest in them. And then it says, is it Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Now, I want you to hear what sometimes we don't pay attention to. It didn't say what shall separate us. Our problem is not a what, it's a who. It's a who. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? This tribulation we're talking about, it, it, it comes through a who. Distress, this distress comes from through a who. Persecution through a who? Famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Is all that is he's 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 listing the what, but what did he well, but what did Paul say this? Well, who shall separate us? Who 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 can talk God out of his plan for your life? People can talk us out of God out of our plan. We can get distracted, but who can talk God out of his plan? For creation. No one. No one. This is where you start. With the richness, not a not a not a little cheesy cushion, but a rock. A rock about life and a rock about the efforts that God has made to keep you and I from being swept away in this world that's ever changing. Slide one. Here's what's so important to know. Here we go. Hope isn't wishing for something. Grounded in hope. It isn't wishing for something. It is trusting in someone. Someone whose promises are completely reliable. Let's take that down. Romans 8, 31 through 36, was, which is filled with promises, reliable promises. Who can separate, who can change God's mind about his true intention when it comes to his creation? Who can change God's mind about restoration? Who can say, if I think about Job and, and how this works, who can, who can go to that judge, so to speak, and bring an, an accusation against you to make that judge have no mercy on you. No one. Hope isn't wishing for something. It is trusting in someone whose promises are completely reliable. So that means it's important, it's important to understand God's promises and to know what you're believing about God. But I want you to see this because sometimes hope has become, sometimes hope has become us wishing for something versus us trusting in someone. If that has been you, you know what my prayer is? That you make your shift today. If you hear his word right now and you say, God, that's, that's how I've been walking. I've been moving in this thing. I've been moving in this thing. I've been trusting. I've been, I've been wishing.
for something versus trusting in someone. Slide two. This one I call the third rock. And I, I, I used some of this on New Year's, but I, I gave you a shorter version of it. When you think about appliances, I, this is not mine. This comes from some electrical something online, but they were just telling you, give you the understanding about what, what it means to be grounded, the third prong, you know, um, and why that third prong is so necessary. So it says appliances with a third prong that goes into the central third slot in an outlet have a safety feature to allow the excess electrical energy to travel through the third ground wire if it were to short circuit. I'm going to call that third prong the Holy Spirit right now. We know there was a father, then the son, and the Holy Spirit came to, 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 to finish it, wrap it all up and keep it all together, the spirit of truth did. And so here, what did it say about this third prong when it comes to appliances? You are the appliance, right? And what does it do? It allows the excess energy to travel through. This is the, the that, that prong does to travel through that third ground wire if it were to short circuit. Can you imagine right now that there's some folks short circuiting right now? This is right, it, it, it is daily, a daily view of what I call something short circuited, short, short circuited. That means the power, you know, I don't, I don't know if you blinking. I don't know if you ever had a short in your line. I've had a short in, in the line. We, we've had technical difficulties. And so we know what it's like when things are not flowing perfectly. Maturely, everything is not doing its part operating the way we know it can operate, but for some reason it is not operating that way. Put that slide back up for me. Thank you. The Holy Spirit, but the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby. Right now, we need all of that. And anytime I'm talking about the, the Son or the Holy Spirit, I'm always talking about God. All of this, all of this is God's doing. So, but the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by. He will teach you all things. Why would, why would Jesus say that? He's obviously talking to folks who, because he's, he's having this conversation. Um, you are about to have to walk by sight. I mean, by, by, by faith now. I am, I am leaving. And you are not going to see this. You're not going to see with your natural eyes what you have been seeing this, uh, uh, through this, this part of our journey. And you're going to have to know how to recognize when this spirit it's talking to you, but most of all, you, 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 it, it is good for you to know uh, the different ways that the spirit will assist you, his helper. He counsel you, strengthen you, advocate for you. See, sometimes you, you know, in, 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 in the story of Job, Job's friends talk to, to him a lot about from the point of you must have done something for this to happen to you. <clears throat> and every now and then we have people in our lives who think that way too. They don't mean they are. Just, it's, it's just the way they believe, what they believe about life. You must have done something. And during those times to keep yourself, that, that, that can become what I call the line in the road. You know, something that you keep staring at. Something that you think that you, you see is going to maul you to death or hurt you or harm you. And you need that advocate to say, you know, I know what you're feeling and I know what you've hurt. 
but I am always speaking just like the son, S-O-N, Jesus. I'm always, I'm in alignment, in agreement with this message of restoration. So I'm an advocate for, for your restoration. I'm an advocate. As a matter of fact, I hear, I'm, uh, 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 I, I'm so tuned into your spirit that I, I can pray when you can, when the spirit is interesting. I can pray to God according to his will when you don't even know what to say. You don't know what to say because you don't really know how you feel, but I know the truth because I'm a spirit of truth. And I know that right now, while you, you fussing and you mad and you going for it, that you're really scared. So when I take this conversation to the father on your behalf, I don't talk about your anger. I talk about this. this she's scared. She's doubting. This is, this is, this is, this is a response to anxiety. And I intercede according to God's will on your behalf. You need to know that. See, when you live long enough and you stay in the light long enough, you, you get to experience that revealing that doesn't come to you at one time. Just enough sometimes to get you through the door. Just enough to keep you from jumping ship. But years later, you'll find you, you'll look up and some, 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 some things that you said you would never do, you'll be willing to do. Not bad things, not ratchet things. But, 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 but you'll mature spiritually. And you'll begin to see, oh, okay, God, I. I don't care about that at this age as much as I used to, or, you know, uh, 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 just, just all kinds of different things. So this, this spirit that this, this advocate, this strengthener, he will teach you all things. That means you need to be taught all things. So always remain teachable. See, when you want to know how the, some adversarial spirit will come into your space. That's why pride is so dangerous because pride keeps you from being teachable. And that pride that, that, that looks like it is against man, it, abs it actually has its four first war is against the truth. And it keeps you from being teachable. How can you benefit from a spirit that came to teach you all things if you're not teachable? Will said it this way some weeks ago, always be open. I'm, I'm going to say what he says. I think we're saying the same things. Remain teachable. Then it says, and he will cause you to recall, remind you, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. Why would that be important for Jesus to say to his disciples? Why? Because once he was, to, once, once to, the comforts that they had, the level of comfort they had, because they could see the physical Jesus right there, the comfort they had, they were no longer going to have because he was going to leave. And, and in their mind, they were going to be in the same position. Then before he came, that's why Jesus, he had to say, get behind me, Satan, because of Peter. Because Peter's like, oh, listen, mm -mm. If you leave, they're going to tear us up. We're we, we going to be right back where we started. But this is what the Lord always wants you to know. Once I've touched you, once I have delivered you, you will always have that in your memory if you believe that I was your deliverer. You're a different person just because you met me. So even if you see yourself standing in the same circumstances. Don't you believe 
that you are the same person standing in the same circumstances. That's why Bruce Lee got this from someone else, but that's who I heard it from. That you never stick your feet in the same river twice. Why is that? Because that, that's, that's new water. That's new and so are you. If you would believe it. He says, so I will, he will cause you to recall. Under this pressure, in this situation that you're in, whatever your situation is, it's different, it's unseen and uncertain space. You're going to need the Holy Spirit to help you recall. Sometimes when the pressure comes on, panic in the mind, the mind just starts looking for solutions everywhere because that's the mind's job. The mind's job is definitely to keep you alive but also to try to find answers. So the mind doesn't necessarily look for God first. Just look for answers. And the mind will let you look for answers everywhere, anywhere. You just, because at this point, you just want the equilibrium. You just want to be brought back into some space. But the Lord said, let me tell you what the spirit will do. Because this one ain't, this ain't based on your intelligence here. It's going to have you to recall. It's going to go in your memory. See, the one thing about memory, the wonderful things about memory, it doesn't just record facts. It records emotions too. And I'm going to take you into your emotional memory. And I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you back to the space where, to a space where you remember where you were. I, 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 I was looking at a movie last night. It was um, Hope. Springs with Meryl Street, and uh, I can't think of his name, but it doesn't matter. The, the guy from the office, he was the therapist and he was trying to get them to reconnect again as a couple. They've been married 31 years. And one of the exercises that he gave them when he saw that he just couldn't get them they didn't have words for their new space. So he took them back into their memory. He says, tell me the first time when you all connected a certain way and it was good. And once they start talking about it and they begin to recall, they move closer and closer and closer and closer together. This is what recall will do for you. And the Holy Spirit will help you at the right time. Recall what God did for you. One of those times when you, you were very emotionally distraught and you really felt lost and lost or, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> defeated and you called out some kind of way. And you cried out to God and nobody can take that one from you because you know that you were, you were not at your wits end. You were just at the place of defeat. And the Holy Spirit will help you recall. He says, Jesus said, everything I have told you. Jesus told them all kinds of things. Sometimes Jesus told them about how to get up. Uh, 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 uh. You know, maybe Peter would never forget when he was fishing all day. This is a, a scripture for you all want to Google it, you can. But Peter had been fishing all day. And uh, uh, and this, this is somewhere in Luke, but he'd been fishing all day and had caught nothing. And then Jesus came along and told him, get back in your boat. And he said, we've been fishing all day. And Jesus said, no, no, no. And then he told him where to go. And he said, go right in that space right there and drop your net. Put down your net. Peter put down his net. Pulled up so many fish that I think the net broke. And if you read that story, after Peter did all of that and, 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 and Jesus uh, uh, provided for them that way, he didn't just provide for them physically by giving them fish. But he, spoke, he, he, he made a, a deposit in their spirit. And it said Peter just cried. And Peter cried and said, I am such a sinner. 
I am, see, sometimes you, you'll be surprised. You say, God, I'm, when God finally brings you through and you don't worry yourself to death, you just stop for a minute and say, God, I was such an unbeliever. Whatever kind of sinner missing the mark that may have been. But I imagine that there was going to be a time when Jesus, with, with, with the Holy Spirit, needed to recall to Peter. Peter, remember that? Remember that time when you, you, you thought that you had fished all day and you just was, I don't know what else to do. And Jesus told you to drop that net. That's that recall. All that I've told you. And I say, in this space, where there's lots of voices and lots of information and lots of experts and lots of non-experts, but everybody talking. And there's so much noise that you're going to need the Holy Spirit to say, excuse me, that's not me. This is not me. That's not me. This is me. This is, this is the voice that is mine. This is the promise that God has given to you and me. Hope says this. Uh, I'm trusting in someone. That's the someone we're trusting in. Let's go to slide three. I want you, this frequency piece, is, this is, came again off of their website when it comes to the third prong. Um, um, electric, how electricity works, how power works, right? So we're talking about being grounded in hope. And I thought this was very good for me. Uh, the purpose of a ground wire is to safely direct excess energy, electricity. Don't take that down while I'm talking, not right now. So I, I want you to focus on the word excess. This is when something becomes excessive. It's too much. And something has to safely direct in, 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 in terms of these wires is electricity, but in terms of us, it's energy. When, when we have excess and our energy is in excess, that leads to stress and illness and anxiety and bad decisions, decisions made out of fear instead of decisions made out of uh, uh, the faith that is connected to hope. And then it says electricity, how it works to eliminate the negative currents from an electrical system in order to return equilibrium. So that power, that third prong, okay, all three. But right now, I just want to focus on the Holy Spirit because this is this is this is where we fit. We run in this last part of this leg of this race from 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 God's play with the Holy Spirit. And the way it works, it works to eliminate the negative currents from your system in order to return you to balance and stability. I didn't write this. This comes from this is. Okay, well, someone like a Clayton, the electrician, can tell you absolutely, okay? So this is what they said on this site. Under typical circumstances, <clears throat> neutral wires lead the way for currents returning to the breaker panel to restore equilibrium in typical circumstances. But if an issue arises, that's bullet four, when the circumstances are not the typical circumstances, if an issue arises in the normal process of electrical flow, energy can be passed to other parts of your home resulting in a short circuit. Take that down. What, what picture do I want you to see in this? When, when, when things are not typical anymore and it, 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 it interrupts the flow of God in our lives. Not the love of God in our lives. The flow of God in our lives. And when they're not uh, typical, it, 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 it interrupts their flow. And then it says that energy, that, that energy that, that, that uh, uh, can be that, what, what, what do you call it? The, 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 the negative currents. That energy can be passed to other parts of your home. I said, oh, we got to nip this in the bud. Why is that? Because this negative energy that started with her thoughts, she's trying to get to her heart. Trying to get in her soul. Trying to affect her will. 
so that when it comes time to carrying out and trusting me to do what I'm asking her, her he, he or she to do, they begin to see a lion in the road. They, they, and, 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 and that lion, that, that, that kitten is now a lion. And the roar is loud. And they no longer see me as the one. Who, who, who has control over all of that. As God told Moses, when Moses saw a lion in the road, when he had to go to Pharaoh. And Moses began to talk, talk like there was a lion in the road. Because, he, because his speech wasn't eloquent. God said it this way. Did I not make the mouth? I made your mouth, Moses. I got this. So I ain't worried about a cough. God got this. You, you just keep doing what you do. That's, that's what I'm asking you to do. That ain't no line in the road. It'll pass. Let me take you back to your memory where you used to stand and call and 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Now, don't mean I shouldn't check it out. Don't mean, doesn't mean it's to be ignored. But it does mean that things happen. And you've seen things happen that, 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 that you didn't recognize as normal before. What did I do? What, what happened in your life? 25 years late. Uh, uh, you still that mouthpiece. So don't you worry. Don't you worry. Listen to me. We slide for. We are wired for change. Change meaning transformation. So the very thing that is challenging our physical well-being right now is an opportunity for our spiritual transformation. It's an opportunity for us to, to practice, get some practice independent and leaning on God. Is that opportunity? Is that time now? We're wired for change. Take that down. And everything, this, this, this is how the old, this is how, how, how Moses said it, and then Jesus uh, repeated too. Listen, God got to teach us not to live by bread alone. This is opportunity when you get to be taught not to live by bread alone. Not to see the physical as your sustenance, sustenance, but to be able to lean on what you can. Lean, lean, and ain't nothing there. To learn how to function in a world that's unseen with things flowing. It ain't, it's concrete. It's a rock. It's a rock because it's steady. It's a rock because it's stable, but it's not a rock because it is concrete because it can move again. Well, God said, trust my flow in the spirit. Trust me. I already told you. Um, no one, no one can talk God out of his plan for your life. Therefore, that someone who can separate, right, that who it will talk you out of something. It will never talk God out of it. That is that foundation is firm, laid, the same yesterday, today, and never more, forever more. Slide five. Matthew 28. <clears throat> now, with all that said, this we says, go then and make disciples of all nations baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them. Sometimes, I, I, why, why am I sharing this with you? Don't take it down, please. Why am I sharing this with you? Because you have to be taught to obey. When we talk about the line in the road, that's teaching you to obey. That's just an opportunity for you to see that there's something that's in the way and it's keeping you from obeying God. You have to be taught to obey. You ought to be taught to obey the scriptures, not just taught to quote the scriptures, but to obey them. To trust God, but to also surrender to God and walk this out. So go and make disciples, make followers of all the nations, those Gentile nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? 
That means what you're going to get when, when, when I allow myself to be baptized in, initiated. So let, let me go. So there's two things that they told to do. Let me, let me make sure I do this. To baptize and teach. To baptize them into the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. See, everything I said before this is going to require a baptism. It's going to require you. See, why do you need to hear the word baptism? Because baptism is what you did. You volunteered for that one. See, once you volunteer to uh, join the faith, that's, 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 that's your decision. Then I can teach you something, and we shouldn't be arguing back and forth because the teaching are not mine, they're God's. So then he says, teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all the days. This is him encouraging his disciples because he understands they're not going to, he's not going to be there holding their hands like that. Teaching them to observe. Not shout. Mm -hmm. You got to observe these commands. And behold, I'm with you all the day perpetually, uniform, and on every occasion to the very close and consummation of the age. Amen. So let it be. Let it be. Take that down. When you decide that you want to be baptized, that you agree, what you're doing is you're agreeing with something. You're agreeing to bind your soul to the laws of God. You are agreeing, agreeing to be devoted to him. You are agreeing when you are baptized in the son. You are agreeing to receive him as your Messiah, your priest, your king. But you don't agree to a king by a title. You agree to a king with your life because you submit to what they tell you to do. A king is only your king because you know that you are the servant. And that he or she, or well, I'm sorry, he can tell you what to do. The king is truly your king when you follow the king's commands. When you submit to his laws and receive him as your deliverer in the, in, in the sense of Jesus, you're saying. To receive Jesus as your savior is not just a confession. It's a life. It's an embrace. This is why he didn't say, just confess it, be baptized. Agree with this. Uh, 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 uh. Connect to this in the Holy Spirit. What would that mean uh, uh, for you? To receive him as your sanctifier. Let the truth sanctify you. You want to be free? It's all, it's all in the truth. It's the truth that'll set you free. Any, any of that other freedom? It, it may feel like freedom, but it's, it's not going to have that eternal, that, 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 that change. That certain change. It says to be baptized into the Holy Spirit is to receive him as your sanctifier. Your comforter and a guide of the soul. Jesus already told you. And, and how, is that, how is that spirit going to come? Like the truth? That's how it's going to come. It's called the spirit of truth. And it's going to show you not your truth, but the truth. The truth. Even, even, uh, 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 and bring light to areas, to those blind spots that we have. So what are we professing? Father, I agree. I yield myself to you. I accept you as my God. What I call it? I bind my soul and body to your laws. The spirit of your laws, that is. And I receive you as a guide and the comfort of my life. Your instructions and I trust your promises. And I give myself to that. See, when I say I give myself to that, there's a whole lot of fighting I'm not going to do when people bring me the truth. 
Because when that truth is the truth of God, then I'm no longer fighting the person. I'm fighting the truth of God. And I'm no, and I'm no longer honoring my volunteer response to be baptized, to be in agreement. And then I got to keep myself teachable because what Jesus said to them, now go teach these nations. That means I got to be teachable. Got to make sure pride doesn't come in. Be humble, honest. Make sure pride doesn't come in. Sounding like a friend. But positioning me to be unteachable. Last slide. I want you to see the picture. Which one are you going to be this year? You see the bottom picture where the three prong, prong plug is disconnected. What do we understand? As long as it's disconnected, there's no power. There is no power flow. There's no flow of power. There's no flow of that power to you. And in order for that power to work in you, just like this three, this plug and this out, this, this, this other end of the plug, there has to be an insertion, a connection, so that all of the positive energy, the grounded positive energy, the safety mechanisms that is necessary for, uh, 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 because this is a three-pronged plug, all of that to help you to, to with the, the excesses and the too much, it has to be connected. And it has to remain connected. John 15, 7. If, say that out loud, if, if you live in me, Abide, vitally united, connected to me. See, trying to connect to Jesus and not obey his commands. He said, to love me is to obey my commands. What was my commands? That you love each other. He didn't say tolerate. It's not talking about tolerate. It's talking about love. Love wants the best for somebody. Love is forgiving. Love, love <clears throat> it gives a, a human being another and a benefit of the top, doubt. Love holds on record, keeps no record of wrongs. It's not easily angered. If you abide vitally united to me and my words remain in you <clears throat> and continue to live in your hearts, ask whatever you will and this shall be done for you. When you bear, produce much fruit. My father is honored and glorified. And you show, <coughs> and you prove yourselves to be true followers of mine. When you bear, produce much fruit. My father is honored. And glorified. And you show and you prove yourselves to be follow, true followers of mine. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. <coughs> now I want you to hear this. The Father loved us to, um, <coughs> Jesus, but he still required him to sacrifice his life. So don't see love outside of sacrifice. Don't see that God's love May uh, uh, that won't ask you to sacrifice. So I have loved you, verse nine. Just as the Father has loved me, abide in my love. Look, look at that. You can be those two plugs can be in the same room, but if they're not connected, how do they stay connected? Here we go. If you keep my commandment. If you continue to obey my instructions, you will abide in my love. 
and live on in it. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands and live on in his love. Take that back. What you going to be this year? Do you want the, listen, ain't do you want, I promise we need it. Do you want the love of God, the support of God, the plan of God, the gifts of God, the Son and the Holy Spirit? Do you want those things flowing in your life every day? Then abide, stay connected. And tell yourself when you feel like chasing all of that noise out there. I'm not alone. What could separate me from the love of God? When you hear something telling you again that you are you're alone. You tell yourself, no, I'm not. Jesus said, I'll be with you always. I'll leave that spirit with you. When you feel. That the world against you, this against you, baby daddy doing this, baby mama doing that, job saying this, this person saying this, you say to yourself, if God is for me, who could be against me? Because when you talk like that, all oh, that's going to just become noise. Noise, not, not, not power, just noise. Listen, let's get ourselves grounded in this hope. In this anticipation that God is good and God is for us. Amen. God bless you. I'm passing it over now. So the only thing that I would just um, not so much add to, but what, what do you say? Agree with <laughs> is if God has an agenda, it's going to be grounded in hope. And grounded in hope looks and sounds like truth. One of the things that constantly hit me as you were talking, Jill, uh, was just a simple question. Um, is how do you react, Will, every time you hear truth? What is your relationship with truth? What is, do you bend towards the negative? Do you bend towards the do you lean into the truth or do you find yourself trying to repel it or run away? See, the great thing about New Year's, this beginning, this, this, this emptying out through the fasting season by dedicating our bodies, our minds, and everything that we are uh, on these 21 days of fasting in the beginning, the great thing, the biggest thing that I pull in connection to this message is that it's an awesome reset button to find out if you unplugged, this is the best time to get plugged back into the source. That question about my relationship with truth and how do I act and how do I respond when I hear it is the direct indicator that tells me or lets me know if my plug is all the way in or if there is a disconnect somewhere between what it is that God is trying to give to me and what it is that I'm trying not to receive. And so the greatest thing about this message is even in the title, to be grounded in hope. The message of God will always and has always been grounded in hope, which means that if I've been receiving messages or accepting messages that move me away and make me feel hopeless or feel something other than the fact that God is for me and nothing or no one else can be against me, then I know that I've not been grounded in hope. And therefore, I know that somewhere in me, whether it's mind, body, or soul, I need to be reconnected to the source. I need to be reconnected to truth. I need to re be reconnected to, to the message of the Spirit of God the one that teaches me all things. I thank you all for tuning in this morning. I speak blessing unto everybody else under the sound of my voice. And I thank you, Jill, for that message. And from there, I want to just pray to say that 
search yourself. There's a song that, that we, we, we also sing. It says, search me, O God, and show me my ways. And if there's any way in me that is wicked or against you, lead me in the way that takes me to everlasting. And so right now, I want us all to just take a moment and ask God to search us. We are in the best place right now to be searched. This is day one of the church fast, which means, God, we are emptying out ourselves, mind, body, and soul. And we want you, God, to check our connection to you. We want to know what we are grounded to. We know that you have an agenda, God. And that's the only agenda we want to focus on because in the end, nothing else will matter. So wherever you are, just bow your heads, close your eyes just for a moment. And as a sign of surrender, if you want to just lift your hands and just repeat after me, search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. See if there be any wicked way in me. And please then, God, lead me to the way of everlasting. Heavenly Father, we come as humbly as we know how in this moment of life that you have gifted us. And we pray right now, God, that you would search us and that you would cleanse us and that you would expose us to ourselves and our relationship to your spirit. Expose us to our relationship with truth. Expose us to our relationship with hope. Expose us to our relationship with moving the way you call us to move. Father God, if there be any pride in me, if there be any way in me that does not lead me to everlasting, God, I pray that you cleanse us right now. We surrender that way to you right now. God, we thank you for all those that have made it to see one more year because not everybody has. So Father God, we thank you, Father God, for allowing us the gift of life on one more day. And we pray right now, God, that we do not waste that gift, but that we lean more into you, God, and that we lean more into the ways that lead us into everlasting. Father God, I pray for every individual that will journey on these 21 days right now, God. I pray, Father God, that you will be honored by our sacrifice with us understanding, God, that us, even sacrifice is a gift. It's not a bad word. It's a gift. And we thank you for the privilege and the honor to let something go just to say to you, God, you are the most important everything to us. And Father God, we sacrifice what it is that you call us to sacrifice in this season just to say to you, God, we acknowledge that you are the Lord of our lives. You are the leader of our next steps. You are the one that we have chosen and will follow from here until everlasting. Father God, lead us in your ways. Help our relationships with the truth, God. Help our relationships with, with hope. And help us to get grounded, God. If we are disconnected, God, I pray for a reconnection right now in your spirit. And I pray that in that reconnection that you and you alone be edified. I speak life over your people, God. Father God, I speak that your spirit become the loudest voice in the room from here on out. And we thank you in advance, God, for allowing us the gift of this new moment. May we not waste it focusing on what was. May we not waste it focusing on what possibly could be. But may we just stay in this moment with you and your spirit. And we pray that you just lead us in the ways that are suitable to your throne. We thank you for choosing us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for keeping us and bringing us into yet one more year. May you be edified by our life, by our words, by our love. It is in the name of Yeshua, also known as Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.